What in the world is that? Oh, iris agate. Karen here with Ozone Fine Art Ventures. Today, we're looking into something almost unreal. Clear stones that turn into lively color play with a flick of the switch and a bat of the eye. How do we know if we have an iris agate? Can you tell before the stone is cut? Are these Oregon limb casts possibly iris agates? Well, I guess we wouldn't be here if they weren't. This dazzling color is coming out of one of these limb casts, but how do you make it happen? We need some help. In the dark side of the moon, we're throwing up the iris agate spectrum serious help signal. Hope Theo sees it and no singing. A box of silicate solutions to our problems landed in timely fashion. See, once you start chasing these rainbows, it's impossible to stop. Wasting no time, the high-tech 10-inch slab saw I have fondly named Nibbler gobbles up the first of Theo's agates. Looking good so far, seeing very tight fortification lines is a great sign. The agate needs to be sliced thin to prepare it and we fire up the high-tech flat lab to get to polishing the lovely Montana agate. We still don't really know what an iris agate is. Isn't this agate just a pretty Montana agate? Why might this one have a rainbow surprise in it? This tragically scratched record can help. Check out the rainbows being cast by its groovy grooves. Those grooves create the different frequencies of sound, and light works the frequency hit parade as well. Here we see the same phenomenon on a CD much tighter grooves than the record, creating a dazzling light show of its own via diffraction of light. So are you telling me that this Montana iris agate that Theo sent is doing something like that to get those gorgeous colors? Bingo! The tight fortification lines we spoke of earlier, like the grooves in the record and the CD, instead of playing music, they take the light frequencies and throw beautiful hues. Okay, bring on the light. As the light enters the stone, it's being diffracted or broken up by the lines and their crystal structures. Very tight lines and agate can be called parallax, fingerprint, and ghost agate. These are ideal to cause the diffraction. The frequency or wavelength of the light is expressed by the color you see. Low frequency being red and the hot colors, while high frequency over on the other side of the spectrum are the cool colors such as indigo and blue. I'm ready. You ready? Is the rock ready? See, Theo Kellison had a plan. We would slice those big Montana agates, as in too big for Nibbler, as thin as possible on our monster saw, whom I've lovingly named Megalodon, as in teeth bigger than a white shark, or just Meg for short. Got some decent slabs. You want to be between three to five millimeters thick on those slabs. The thinner you go, the more possibility you have for fractures to ruin your day, or at least a few slabs as it were. It was so exciting to cut these iris candidates. It's still hard to tell though if they bear the rainbows. Need to send them back to Theo. Lily and Ochiko, I need you guys to take this box to Theo. Okay, go! Go! Take it! What do you have, Floyd? What in the world? How does that work? Did you get this from, from Ochako and Lily? I mean, I don't even want to question that logistically because that is just confusing and makes no sense. But... So, we got our stones back. If you'll remember, I sent her three. Well, one of them didn't yield anything so I just let her keep it because you know I don't know if any of you knew this but in Oregon they don't actually have Montana agates I know crazy right I, I do because I live in Montana so I can go get more so I'm gonna unpack these because this is gonna take a second I have a feeling because I'm clumsy and then I'll be right back okay so here's what we got a bunch of cuts from this one three nice slabs from this one and then she polished two pieces 
So looking at the little one, we'll start with the little one first. Where's my flashlight? You can see some color up top inside of that parallax. So this is this is a good one right here. That's super pretty. And some of these I think, oh man, like, like that. I mean, that would make some gorgeous cabochons. The big one on the other hand does have some iris. There's a little bit, oh how am I gonna gesture? You can see in that top like center pocket you see that that little red and green right there and that continues on all around on there so there's a nice pocket right there but then see that kind of bright white band well right on the opposite side of it on the far side of it there is another color bar for lack of a better word right there yeah you can see it right there so that one does have iris and the cool thing about that is if you look at the slab We've got this right here. Looks like, oh, actually, yeah, that's, wow, I just lined that up perfectly. We've got that right there from this slab. So, whenever this gets fully polished, there will be a beautiful rainbow center and then a rainbow line and then just a really pretty slab on the outside. That is super exciting. Karen, I feel like I let you down. I should have sent you better, better agates. So um, expect more agates to arrive at some point that I've already confirmed to Iris. Cause yeah, I was supposed to send you some like crazy bangers and I, I feel like I dropped the ball. I'm sorry. You know it's good if it's glowing like this even before you polish it. One of the most miraculous things about the iris agates is that they just keep getting brighter and brighter the more you polish them. It's like getting high fidelity for our visual music. While I'm polishing mine by hand on the flat lab, Theo put the ones for his iris agate video. Oh, make sure to check that out. The link is in the description. He put his in a tumbler to polish. There's no wrong way to polish them as long as you tune in those rainbows. I'm telling you, this will make a stone gazer in the dark out of you if you're not careful. Remember our Beatles album, that scratched record? You can see how similar they are with this lovely parallax. Just because the agate has wonderful tight lines, it doesn't guarantee it's going to throw rainbows. This one has extremely faint diffraction. They're not all winners. Okay, so how about this pink agate limb cast with the pretty druzy center? A beautiful gem, but also faint. A little hue here and there. Oh man, was I excited about this one. The big green limb cast with petrified wood inclusions. This has to be a winner. You'll notice that all the shots of iris agate are lit from the back. That is how the diffraction works. The light is being broken apart and bent by the inclusions, and in the right circumstances, lighting up with color. Yep, there's some. It's little. Come to find out that if you have tiny lines, you have tiny little color bands. You can see how detailed these fortification bands are, like filigree around the pockets of petrified wood. The patches that look milky have such tight banding that they cast light pastels as opposed to neon lights. Here's another pink limb cast. Even though it sports the same kind of milky spots and lacy banding, it's got a totally different character than the other one. It was challenging to shoot the color in this, having way more going on than I could catch with the camera. That's definitely another downside to the smaller specimen. Okay, if you guessed this little pink limb cast was the ace in the hole, you were right. The specimen is small, but it's a chip off a much bigger block, or limb in this case. 
I couldn't see any sign of the iris before cutting, but as soon as it was sliced, it broke forth with a display beyond my wildest expectations, since I had none. This has made me a rainbow gazer in the dark. The hues are so pure, bright, and saturated. It's a hypercolor optical symphony. The spectrum shifting through the bands like a chorus singing rare and unusual chords in a myriad of intriguing tempos. We can really see here the texture of the tiny crystal inclusions creating the diffractions like those grooves on the record. It's amazing to see with the slightest move, the whole spectrum hit the stone differently, the colors dancing to their own music. Here's Theo's Montana Agate Firecracker again. Watch as we shift the light through the stone and cause the frequencies to be expressed in different regions through the bands. These beg for a closer view. In a world where everything has a reason, like peacocks have outrageous colors to attract the peahens, it's magnificent that these stones contain these secrets that are just there, for no reason. There to be enjoyed by someone who spends a little time and takes a closer look. We received some great Montana specimens from Theo, and we found iris in Oregon limb cast as well. You have to wonder which rocks contain surprises sitting right under your nose. We'll be opening these rocks, limb casts and agates, for the next iris video, continuing the chase for the rainbows. It's easy to be beguiled by this quest, to tirelessly seek to behold all this pure color. The artist in me is absolutely in awe. How nature paints with perfect hues in crystalline brush strokes and light. How the mixing of the colors is effortless and so pleasing to the eye. I'd like to thank you for coming on this colorful adventure with us. And special thanks to Theo Kellison for sending the agates and literally hours of help and guidance on how to, in his words, coax the rainbows from the stones. Thanks for sharing this incredible world. For more information, check out ozonefineart.com. And of course, keep creating. <laughs>